Hello and welcome to this presentation on local and regional decarbonization in Japan, which provides an overview of the different decarbonization policies and strategies taken up by municipalities, prefectures, and clusters throughout Japan. My name is Emma Saraf, and this research project was conducted as part of the Minerva Policy and Market Intelligence Program at the EU Japan Center for Industrial Cooperation. The center is a joint venture between the EU Commission and the Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, also known as METI. This presentation will cover three main areas. First, Japan's energy landscape, meaning its CO2 emissions, the fuel sources that make up its energy mix, and recent political statements regarding the future of decarbonization in Japan. Following that, we'll move on to an examination of the different policies and approaches that seek to tackle decarbonization in Japan. And finally, we'll discuss the different opportunities that exist for decarbonization in Japan meaning the forms of collaboration that can exist between residents, companies, clusters, municipalities, prefectures, and the national government. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce the main research questions that served to guide this research project. First, what role do Japanese cities and towns play in the larger climate policy agenda? How do they understand the focus on decarbonization goals and their own relationship to these goals? And finally, what opportunities exist for public and private sector actors to participate in the integration of decarbonization plans and tools? Let's begin with Japan's energy landscape. According to the Global Carbon Project, in 2018, Japan accounted for 3% of total global emissions of carbon dioxide, making it the sixth highest emitter of CO2. Of the six highest emitters in the world, Japan also had the third highest per capita emissions rate behind only the United States and Russia. A quick look at a graph of annual CO2 emissions in Japan provided by Our World in Data can help contextualize the reasons behind the rise and decline of CO2 emissions in Japan since the post-war. In the early years of the Japanese economic miracle, Japan experienced an explosion of industrial growth, which quickly led to greater emissions as well as noticeable air and water pollution, and the subsequent impacts of these on human health. However, the oil shocks of the 1970s prompted Japan to decouple itself from foreign oil and invest in energy efficiency measures, which led to a corresponding decline in emissions. Emissions then ramped up again in the 80s and 90s, alongside an increase in consumer spending. Japan's emissions experienced a sudden and temporary decrease in 2009, due to the effects of the 2008 financial crisis and the subsequent recession. However, emissions quickly bounced back in the years following, reaching their peak in 2013, following the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami disaster, which led to the shutdown of the nuclear fleet, and therefore an influx of power derived from liquefied natural gas, or LNG, and coal to fill the energy gap. Japan's high CO2 emissions rate is mainly a factor of its fossil fuel heavy energy mix. Japan overwhelmingly relies on fossil fuels to generate its electricity, power its industries and households, and fuel its vehicles. Japan has been historically dependent on foreign-sourced fossil fuels, as the nation possesses limited coal and oil resources of its own. Its energy policies have co-developed alongside this reliance on coal and natural gas alongside a focus, beginning in the 1950s, on nuclear power. Today, most of Japan's energy mix is still dominated by fossil fuels, with a small percentage of that mix covered by the growing renewable sector and recovering nuclear sector. The share of renewables in Japan has historically been extremely low, but over the past decade, Japan has been embracing the potential of renewable energy. Inroads have been made into hydropower, solar, and wind energy, largely thanks to the government's implementation of a feed-in tariff in 2012. By 2019, renewables made up 8% of Japan's total primary energy supply, up from 4% in 2008. Solar energy in particular has been the dominant player in this surge. Today, Japan is known on the international stage for its support of newcomer technologies in a gestational phase, including hydrogen energy. However, these technologies will only bear fruit in the mid to long term, and more immediate reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, particularly in the context of new decarbonization goals, will require major changes to Japan's energy mix, as well as renewed attention to energy efficiency and energy demand. With many countries coalescing around the shared goal of carbon neutrality, Japan has moved to emphasize its commitment to decarbonization. In October 2020, during his inauguration speech, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga made headlines by pledging to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, 
Following this pledge, in May 2021, on the heels of U.S. President Joe Biden's Earth Day Summit, Prime Minister Suga set the bar high for decarbonization by announcing a new government target of 46% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared with 2013. Several laws and policy frameworks govern Japan's response to climate change. The Global Warming Countermeasures Law, enacted in 1998, which was most recently updated in 2021 to grant more autonomy to cities and regions, was developed in response to the Kyoto Protocol and the need to reduce countrywide greenhouse gas emissions. The basic energy plans, produced every year as instituted by the Basic Act on Energy Policy, present cogent descriptions of Japan's energy policy, including intended changes to the share of fuels that make up the energy mix. The Act Concerning Promotion of Low-Carbon Cities, enacted in 2012, was developed to help municipalities create action plans, which is part of the stipulations included in the Global Warming Countermeasures Law. The Green Procurement Act from 2000 and the, year, and the Green Contracting Law from 2007 create regulations and guidelines to govern public procurement in cities and regions. The reform of Japan's electricity market, which has been ongoing incrementally for decades, but experienced a policy push in the form of the amended Electricity Business Act in 2013, has also had significant implications for greenhouse gas emissions, particularly in the context of electricity retail. Five basic energy plans have been approved in Japan since the publication of the Basic Act on Energy Policy. The fifth basic energy plan was approved in 2018. In late October 2021, the cabinet voted on and officially approved the sixth basic energy plan. This sixth basic energy plan updates several positions of the fifth basic energy plan, showcasing Japan's increased ambition and commitment to a carbon-free future. Another key policy for decarbonization in the context of municipalities and prefectures is the regional revitalization strategy. As described by the Japanese government, Regional revitalization is a strategy that aims to improve the Japanese economy by creating a flow of people from urban to rural areas, increasing income in rural areas, and conducting regional revitalization through such measures as reforms to tourism and agricultural industries. The regional revitalization strategy essentially seeks to address key demographic challenges in Japan. The population in rural areas has been steadily declining as the overall population ages, and young people living in smaller communities depart to seek job opportunities elsewhere. In order to grow municipalities currently in decline, the government has initiated a set of policy measures underneath the heading of regional revitalization. Regional revitalization as a political strategy was first developed during the Abe administration and formulated as policy in 2014 as the Act for Overcoming the Population Decline and Vitalizing Local Economy in Japan, also known as the Regional Revitalization Act. This act was revised in 2016. The Act aims to subsidize local revitalization, develop a tax incentive for corporations that donate to local revitalization, and build a support network for the welfare of aging residents in rural regions. Regional revitalization programs are intended to boost birth rates, reverse rural exodus, and improve the overall well-being of Japan's residents, particularly its oldest members. Such programs, therefore, often seek to improve childhood education, support housing infrastructure, institute family-friendly policies, promote local industry and tourism, develop community infrastructure, build strong working communities, enhance opportunities for employment, and promote local governments. However, several approaches for regional revitalization are also happily green. The 2021 Regional Decarbonization Roadmap, developed by the National and Regional Decarbonization Council, is a key document detailing how decarbonization and revitalization can be mutually beneficial. Policy tools and programs created to revitalize regions and that also have a green component include the Compact City Program, the Eco Cities Program, the Future Cities Program, the SDGs Future Cities Program, and Smart Cities. Compact City design is often emphasized as a core aspect of community revitalization, as this form of design allows residents to access centralized services and more easily build community. Compact cities, that is, cities that centralize their commercial activities within a smaller radius, thus reducing the need for car dependency, are associated with lower per capita emissions. The Eco Model City, Future City, and SDG's Future City, three unique Japanese initiatives aimed at municipalities, also respond to the dual challenges of revitalization and green transformation. Smart cities, which integrate information communications technology into cities to improve resident experiences, can also include green initiatives. The local approach to decarbonization in Japan does face several challenges. It is useful to examine surveys of municipalities as well as proposals submitted by municipalities to understand the challenges they face. 
Such documents often highlight key challenges, including the fact that cities and towns often lack qualified personnel, and the traditional rotational system of employment in Japan means that dedicated, climate-savvy officials are not always able to remain in the long term. In addition, cities, towns, and prefectures don't always have access to sufficient funding to implement ambitious ideas. This is particularly the case of smaller, cash-strapped municipalities. In the case where funding is available from the national government, it may only cover one-year projects, which limits the scope of potentially transformative projects. Also, digital tools to assess emissions and develop databases may be lacking. And finally, as a survey of municipalities and prefectures often show, there may be limited interest from a city's residents or even dissatisfaction with decarbonization-related projects, such as power plants developed in the vicinity of their homes and places of business. In the full report, we collect several key examples of collaboration motivated by decarbonization goals. Here, I will briefly discuss two examples. The first is the Odawara Grid Project. Odawara City, in partnership with several Japanese companies, developed a regional microgrid in 2020 within its jurisdiction in order to promote renewable energy, increase its resilience during natural disasters, and to supplement its energy production during non-disaster times. This project is also notable for its incorporated innovations, including electric vehicle and storage battery support, and blockchain technology for supply and demand management. The entire project involves a consortium of companies led by Kyocera, a major Japanese manufacturer of electronics. One SME involved in this project has supported the development of the microgrid by providing blockchain-assisted supply and demand balancing functions. Another SME has developed an energy management system for EVs and supporting infrastructure. Participating in the Kyocera-led project allowed the smaller companies, particularly the SMEs, the valuable opportunity to trial their technologies with the support of both larger companies and the Japanese government. Odawara City is a key partner in this project, as it is coordinating the energy policies that form the backbone of the project, and is also tasked with disseminating key information about it to its residents. The example of the Odawara microgrid captures a growing trend in Japan to develop distributed energy systems, or microgrids, throughout the nation. Microgrids are independent from the main energy system and can continue supplying energy in the case of an emergency, such as during a natural disaster. Japan is particularly vulnerable to disasters that can quickly disrupt access to power, including earthquakes and typhoons, and several incidents in recent years have caused significant hardship for affected residents and municipalities. In this context, METI has made several moves to encourage the development of microgrids in Japan. The Odawara City microgrid was made possible through support from METI's Regional Microgrid Project Initiative. The second example is the Shinjuku Electricity Auction Program. Shinjuku City and a Japanese company have partnered to develop an electricity auction system to promote the switchover to renewable electricity in Shinjuku area businesses. Switching to a renewable electricity provider can prove costly for end users, both in terms of money and time spent researching different suppliers. However, by implementing the electricity auction system, municipalities can innovate within the field of energy services to make the process of procuring renewable electricity more approachable for newcomers. As described by Shinjuku City, the electricity auction system is aimed at businesses interested in switching to a renewable source of electricity, but that have reservations over the potential high cost. The municipality has sought to make the changeover process simple by creating a six-item form that allows companies to register to participate in the auction and locate a new electricity contract at a lower price. The municipality provides both usage of the auction platform and additional support at no extra charge. The Japanese company that develops the electricity auction platform is an SME that has entered into several agreements with various municipalities across Japan, including Saitama City, Kanagawa Prefecture, Kasai City, and Masada City, among several others. By partnering with interested cities and towns, as well as prefectures, the platform is able to help the municipality lower both its administrative costs and the emissions of its local businesses. It can be used by the municipalities themselves to procure renewable energy for public facilities. Recently, Kasai City in Hyogo Prefecture announced that it would utilize the platform in a bid to decarbonize all of its public facilities. Finally, I'll cover some international and paradiplomatic examples of collaboration on decarbonization, chiefly between the European Union and Japan. The EU and Japan are linked strategically, commercially, and diplomatically by way of the Strategic Partnership Agreement, Economic Partnership Agreement, and the EU-Japan Energy Dialogue. At a bilateral summit in 2021, the EU and Japan also formed the historic Green Alliance, the first of its kind between the EU and another nation. This alliance reaffirms the commitment of both the EU and Japan to secure climate-neutral, biodiversity-friendly, 
circular and resource efficient economies with the goals of achieving green growth and net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. One area of connectivity between the EU and Japan concerns city-to-city -city or para-diplomatic relations. European and Japanese cities and regions can pursue collaborative activities through various avenues. The EU and Japan Regional Cooperation Help Desk, coordinated by the European Union via the European Center for Japanese Studies in Alsace, and Japan via the Council of Local Authorities for International Relations, is an example of a platform motivated by city-to-city, -city, local, and regional cooperation. This help desk aims to encourage cooperation between municipalities, regions, and clusters from both Japan and the EU. The sectors involved are varied. In January 2021, the EJRC help desk organized a webinar on renewable energy and regional revitalization as part of its EU-Japan Regional Cooperation and Good Practices series. This event featured Fukushima, Japan, and the state of North Rhine-Westphalia from Germany. In December 2021, another webinar on decarbonization was held, focusing on joint efforts between Nagano Prefecture in Japan and North Karelia in Finland. There's also the EU-funded International Urban Cooperation, or IUC, program, which supports city-to-city -city cooperation on sustainable urban development, with Japan being one of its target countries. This initiative aims to facilitate the development of local action plans and knowledge sharing between cities with similar sustainability challenges. A regional IUC office for Japan was established by Nagoya University in 2017, and this regional office lists 10 active pairings between Japanese cities and European Union counterpart cities. As part of the IUC program, Yokohama and Frankfurt signed their Urban Cooperation Action Plan partnership agreement in August 2018, committing to a program of knowledge sharing on their energy transition journeys. The cities were chiefly interested in sharing best practices in two main areas. First, the cities were interested in developing forms of cooperation with other municipalities in their respective countries, with an eye towards increasing the utilization of renewable energy. Yokohama, for instance, has developed a virtual power plant system that makes use of renewable energy from its northern neighbors in Tohoku. In addition, Yokohama and Frankfurt shared an interest in the use of nudging as part of supporting environmental projects, and wanted to use their partnership to explore this concept. Delegations from both cities have been able to meet several times. In April 2018, the Frankfurt team was able to visit Yokohama and directly observe the operations of a district heating and cooling facility. Thank you very much for your time and attention. For more information about these topics, please access the full report. For further information about the EU-Japan Center for Industrial Cooperation, please visit their website located at www.eu-japan.eu.